Wow, I'm no sparked. way. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Reverse Engineered. Uh, today we're gonna go ahead and finish up this Ford uh, Mustang GT that we got from the auction. Uh, last week we went ahead and finished these frame rails as you can see here. We painted them and uh, we fixed it up as it is like OEM. Actually even better than OEM, you know? But anyway, in this episode we're gonna go ahead and install the front end radiator core support, the entire cooling system, and everything that goes underneath there. Well, first of all, we're gonna go ahead and remove this frame machine that we have here. And after that, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, do what I just said. But before we go ahead and do that, make sure you like, which is gonna help us in the long run. And uh, pretty much you're gonna see more of us rebuilding more cars cool cars and uh, after that go ahead and subscribe also if you want to share but the main thing is turn on your post notifications go ahead and uh, comment down below and about what you think what you would like to see next on this channel let's go Sam let's go ahead and install that uh, sway bar back up Pull these wires out of the way, make sure you don't pinch on anything like that. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get that back up where it used to be. And where was this? This, I'm guessing. Mm hmm. So initially, we were actually going to remove the sway bar because it was in the way of whatever we needed to weld. But it turns out we just pulled it all the way to the side. And uh, we were able to get the clearance we needed and uh, also clearance from the wheel. It did not damage or hit the wheel in any way. Pulled it over, did our work, pulled it back in there and we're good to go. I like how they finally upgraded the system for these uh, sway bar links. You put them right there and another one here. Where in the past you would have to put a little, uh, what? Like Allen a wrench. Allen wrench or an Allen key in there. But most of the time that wouldn't do the work, wouldn't do the job because it would either break or would not hold up to all the strength that you needed to tighten down the bolt or the nut. So thanks for for that. We're also gonna go ahead and install back the alternator. You can tell how new this car is by just looking at this alternator. It pretty much shines, dude. So with these V8 engines, you have some pros and cons. The cons is <laughs> uh, trying to, if this goes bad, try to get it out. Good luck. <laughs> it's kind of a hustle. It's kind of hard, huh? Take it off. Yeah. How'd you guys do it? it How goes, did we do it? It tucks in right over there. It's kind of. It kind of sucks to get out. It's you guys hard. caught me. I said, "How did they do it?" I wasn't here when they removed it. <laughs> so did you guys out. drop the cradle when you guys took that off? No. So you got room. Oh. But, All right. Okay, that's where it goes. So. Uh, you you might not have to drop the cradle, but you'll have to remove a lot of stuff from the front of the car. There's airbags right here. 
and but, yeah. what other things. <laughs> the airbox, the radiators need to go. And it's gonna take some time. We also got to fix these wires here. We probably got to find some uh, repair kits for these because you don't have any sockets because they're lost from the accident or whatever. Dust them away. You also got to put a screw there. John, you sure you're not going to bust my finger? You're, you're fine. Huh. That thing goes, dude. It goes my hand. Okay, okay this is my one. power is going away now. Well done. You might want to move. You didn't strain it. Okay, let it go. Let it go, let it go. Oh. <laughs> wow, dude. With what a clearance. Of a piece of hair <laughs> between this and the pulley. Did you see how easy that was, John? Yeah. Super easy. So now is the time for us to get this belt back in. Although we don't have the diagram for the belt, it's all right, because I took mental pictures. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, yeah, let's go. You know that the mind sometimes deceives you, man. <laughs> if you forget in the blink of an eye. That's it. Wow, that was so quick and easy. Mm -hmm. John, how long did you stare at the belt before you learned the whole thing? Zero seconds. Were you dramatized at the time? <laughs> <laughs> it was the time we were when I was dramatized. I'm joking. Uh, sometimes you throw now uh, rotted the right way, you end up with a slack in one part or on one side, and you realize what's going on. It looks exactly like it used to be, but you have to reroute the entire thing, and you're fine. Okay, here go you go. Go ahead. See how easy this is to put this back. Boom, guys, just like that. Dude. And that baby, it's a V8. Look at that. You see V6, <laughs> even uh, four bangers, four piston engines with way bigger uh, pulleys and more pulleys and a longer belt. Look at that. Small and good. simple. Quick and easy. One of the things we have to do after we take off the frame machine is do an oil change on this car because it already has around 7,000 miles. So yeah. I'm guessing whoever had the car, the owner before us, he never did an oil change. Yeah, we know one thing that uh, sometimes some dealerships uh, tell people uh, or recommend people to bring it back around 10K. But just for the sake of it, we're just gonna change it. Put a 5 out 30. A lot of people say 5W20, like it says here, but 5W30 is what uh, Ford recommends now. So we're gonna do that and get it going. Can't wait to drive it. Oh yeah, it's gonna drive like a beast, man. I know one thing, changing the oil is gonna make it sound even nicer. <laughs> we probably sounds a lot louder, huh? <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, back to work.
Okay, so the front reinforcement bar seems to dry up. Everything is good and we're gonna take it and install it back on the car. Looks good. Looks better than factory, man. <laughs> what they do, they paint the top and barely paint the bottom or the back of the thing. Let's go ahead and install this. Yeah, we took a trip outside the garage. That's where we had this painted. It fits right, it fits on right like a glove. So we finally removed the frame machine from the car. Now it's time to continue on with the work on the front end here. This should easily snap in, right? Mm -hmm. Boom. It sounds so satisfying when you hear when things go back. So we installed this lower hose here for the radiator. And then we got to install this other one that goes here. It's uh, shaped as a T. John has it here. We just ordered it from the dealership. This one is a very common issues on the F-150s. Uh, they usually start leaking coolant. Sounds like that. Yeah, oh, it goes in there. Yeah, it goes in there and then the oh, top. Yeah. There's a very common issue on the F-150s with this exact uh, piece. They start leaking out, so they have to replace them. Oh yeah, I have it here. It's right here. Yeah, it's not like you, boy. It's a lot easier if you guys use lubricant. We never had used these lubricants before but now we just started using it yeah i just uh, snap it's, it in that's all oh wow that snap dude imagine <laughs> if your fingers get caught uh oh you might say goodbye to your skin okay you want to do something <laughs> you want to do something are you too afraid I'm not afraid, I don't want my fingers chopped and snapped. And I don't want to go to the emergency with a bleeding finger. I'm pretty yeah. sure they have bigger problems but than a bleeding finger. Oh yeah, especially nowadays. Wow, it's no way. Sparked. <laughs> Crazy. Hey, it's in. It's in, baby. We still have one more when we installed the Radiator, it goes right at the bottom. I I'll hope. Put, I'll put it in now. Oh yeah. Okay. Same way. So uh, what I like about these things, you pretty much open it, you snap it all the way, where you can see this uh, Indian tension or the thing that goes up, and it locks it in like that. And it stays open. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And then once you install it, you just have to push it down. Or I wish German engineers would do that, but hey. Americans are Americans are also staying ahead of uh, German engineering. John looks like he's serving some breakfast under the car. <laughs> we have some bad experience with that pan. Why it flows over? No, look inside. See what you find. Oh, Check it out. metal shavings, boys. This is from a different vehicle. Yeah, check this out, guys. We have some issues with an X5 2012. X5 diesel baby, <laughs> that thing was such a pain. Whew. I didn't want to remember that thing, man. Let's do this. Let's see how this thing goes out. Flying like crazy. <laughs> uh, not looking forward to this. This operation here, you gotta have some gloves, probably some. Oh, okay. 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 
So far, so the good. It looks pretty good. I mean, the oil looks pretty clear. Huh? Either way, we're gonna change it out just to be safe. I forget it. Six thousand miles. Six thousand nine hundred and eighty something. Okay, so now that the old oil filter is out, we gotta put the new one in. Here it is, looks pretty new. We bought it from the Ford, so everything is good to go. It does have such a weird spot to put this in, cause like, don't really have room to tighten it down right there. I hope I don't drop this oil filter. There you guys have it. This thing, instead of tanking just about five quarts, takes about how many? Seven? Ten quarts, man. That's insane. That's a lot of 9.5, but imagine maybe up to 10. So we finally put the oil in, installed the oil filter. Now it's time to give this thing a start and see how it runs with the new oil. Maybe it's gonna run different. <laughs> Let's go. John, how excited are you to hear the beast? 100 from one to 10. That sound never gets old. Sounds really awesome. Muscle, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Sounds like real power, dude. Look at that thing. It's huge. Almost as big as my fingers. Anyway, it looks, sounds really ni nice. Yeah. What do you think, Sam? Sounds amazing, man. Ah, I just came, John. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, didn't I? You got me. But I gotta get you back. Yeah, dude. They're pretty loud. I had to key in my hand and I had to do it, man. <laughs> Maybe you'll get me next time, huh? <clears throat> Don't plan anything. Don't worry. I'm not saying anything. I'll just get you. He's planning on something. It's much easier to get these pipes and uh, fittings back into place whenever you lubricate the system over there. That's it, boom, it's in. I'm holding it on this side. Oh, actually, I have to wipe it open. There you go. Yeah, I like that on the side. Also, the other one. Oh, this one is more. Yeah. Still got a couple of hoses here to connect to the air box and whatnot. This goes to the air box, this goes here. Pretty much done, John. I don't know what this is for, it's just, it has a socket in it, just uh, I'm guessing for the cars that have uh, some more options or what? Yeah, might, could it be uh, front bumper sensors? Who knows? Something like that. If anyone knows, you guys can let us know in the comments below. Yeah, please do. 
we, lo we would love to find more stuff about these cars, especially that uh, they're uh, Ford Muscle, pretty cool cars. Also bought a new crash sensor here because the one I don't know from from this side was damaged. And uh, whenever you guys want to install these uh, type of sensors on the car, you need to have the battery disconnected, a negative terminal, so you don't blow the airbags or anything like that. So let's put this here. We need a nut for it, and uh, if it fits, it sits. <laughs> there you go, just like that. We're gonna end the episode here because it's getting way too long and uh, please stay tuned for the next one if you haven't subscribed please do so there's more content coming out and i think you're gonna like it the car is coming out amazing it looks stunning so far i cannot wait to have it done and get it dr to dry and uh please subscribe if you haven't done so also give us a like comment down below and stay inside stay safe see you guys next time Thank you.